Hey, Andrew Skirk with Sierra Designs. This video, I'm gonna show you the guy line system that I use to pitch all non-freestanding tents and tarps. The problem with stock guy lines, there actually there's two of them. The first is that usually they don't give you enough cord. So this becomes a real problem in rocky ground where you have to put your stake right here and you have no other options and there's a big rock there. The other problem with stock guy lines is that they don't allow you to use natural anchors like branches or trees or down logs, and those anchors are gonna be way stronger than, than, a, than a stake. So you might as well use them if you can. So the guideline system that I'm gonna show you, it's really easy to learn, it's easy to adjust, it doesn't require any hardware, it just requires require some cord, and for you to learn a couple of knots. So let's get started. If you'd like to use this guideline system, it's really best that you remove the plastic hardware that comes with the shelter. But removing it is permanent, so what you might wanna consider is using the guideline system first, making sure that it works for you before you take a pair of wire cutters to these plastic hardware pieces. You go ahead and clip this little plastic piece. Usually two clips are best. All right, last one. So at this point, we now have a bunch of nylon webbing loops around the perimeter of the shelter where the guy lines used to be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bowline knot to attach new guy lines back to the shelter. A lot of people get scared by knots, but don't get intimidated by them. I find that when I'm learning a new knot, the best thing for me to do is learn it from the exact same perspective every single time. And then I also find that I'll learn it much more quickly if I do it a lot. So I'd encourage you to turn on your favorite TV show, get some cord and learn these knots 20, 30 times. And it's like riding a bicycle where you never really forget it after that. I've used a bowline knot to attach this orange line to my shelter, but to help you see it a little bit better and also to show you how to tie the bowline, I'm gonna go ahead and use this thicker yellow line. So I take my tail end and I I'll push it through the nylon webbing loop that was left after we removed the plastic hardware. I go ahead and create a loop in my standing line, which is on the right side. And I pull the loop so that way the standing line is underneath the tail end or my left, the, si the left side. I take my tail end, go through the loop, go around underneath my standing end, and I go back into the loop. When I pull this tight, I end up with a nice loop like this, and this is the bowline. You'll notice that the, it's a, this is a very secure knot. It also it has, it leaves me a nice loop to work with, and then finally, um, it doesn't require much cord, much less cord, in fact, than like the figure eight knot, which is also used in this capacity. As you can see, I've set up most of the shelter, and to do all the corners, I use what I call the McCarthy hitch. You can also think of it as an abbreviated trucker's hitch. But I have one final tie out that I'd like to show you in order to show you how to do this knot and to show you kind of some of its advantages. And what we're gonna do in this is we're gonna porch the front door of the Sierra Designs high root tent to give you a little bit more living area and also to increase ventilation. The McCarthy hitch is my preferred way to tie out uh, guy lines. I go ahead and I take my tail end and I wrap it around an anchor like this stake right here. Take my tail end and I go through the bowline loop that I created earlier. And then I pull my tail end back towards my stake. And this gives me three to one mechanical advantage, which means that I don't need to put a whole lot of tension on this cord before it really cranks down the shelter. To tie this off, I go ahead and pinch this pivot point. I create a loop and I take a bite from my tail end and I go ahead and pull it tight up against my pivot point. And this is a slippery half hitch. Now if I need to adjust this, it's really easy to do. I could just go ahead and pull, that undoes the knot. And let's suppose that I wanted to push the door a little bit more. I go ahead and I can retighten, pinch that pivot point, create the loop, take the bite, pull the slip loop or the slippery half hitch up against that knot and I'm all done. Now, let me take this a step further. So I'm gonna show you how to do the trucker's hitch. Now, if there were a big rock right in this vicinity and I couldn't get my stake down here, I might have to go a little bit further out. So let me pull, go ahead and pull this stake out. And let's suppose that I had to go all the way out here with my stake because of that big rock. I go ahead and I bring my working end around my stake and I don't have enough cord to get back to my bowline loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a loop in this standing line here. 
I'm gonna create a slip loop. To create a slip loop, I make a loop, and I take a bite from my tail end, and I pull that bite back towards the stake. And now I have a slip loop. And, a, and by that I mean, if it pulls, it disappears. So again, so I create a loop, take the bite towards the stake. I go ahead and I take my tail end, go through the loop, and now this system should look pretty familiar. Uh, this slip loop is basically uh, behaving the same way that that bowling loop did back there. I go ahead and intention this, three to one mechanical advantage, pinch that pivot point, loop, take a bite, slippery half hitch to secure it. I'll also point out that I could go around both lines, doesn't really matter. Loop, take the bite, slip loop, and this here is the trucker's hitch. I've now shown you three different knots. I've shown the bowling, the McCarthy hitch, and the trucker's hitch. If you learn these knots, you'll have a guideline system that's really versatile, really easy to use, and allows you to set up your shelter really quickly.